Yes, Mr. Lee. I wanted to ask, and I know that yesterday you'd said to, to, to pursue uh, this, uh, what some people are calling it a scandal, but the issue of, of uh, the whistleblower at the Office mm -hmm. of, of uh, High Commissioner of Human Rights with them. And I, there definitely are issues that are only theirs. I, I guess I could just ask as a policy matter whether it's still the practice to turn over the list, pre, to pre-turn over the list of attendees to, to governments. Or, or when they say uh, think, that the I Ireland think they, I think they, they addressed, okay. the, the, UN, uh, the Office of the High Commissioner of Human Rights addressed this very clearly. Right. My, my question, and I said, try to say yes, I'm trying to really boil it down. There and are they parts, said they did, you know, I, I think yeah. they were very clear in the okay. response. There are parts of this that are, that are directly about the, uh, concerning the ethics office. Mm -hmm. I want to ask about that, m the memo, and just if you can say, is it in fact a violation of UN rules for a UN staff member to have a, a, a country sponsor a book selling event? That's describe. That's in the memo. So I just wanted to know. I, I don't. You know, I'm. I'm not going to speak about uh, the memo. I think, it, as a matter of principle, if staff members uh, have an issue and they think there may be a conflict, uh, it is their responsibility to go to the ethics office. But in the past, Robert Benson, there have been other ethics officers who've come. I like this. This is a request that that the ethics officer officer. Ms. Armstrong, do a press briefing. Like we've never, I'd asked you before about the, the, the email that went out about not participating right. in the Women's March, it was unclear who signed it. Is it possible to have her come as her predecessors have to actually explain what these rules are can as it relates we, to we, a very we, troubling whistleblower we, case? We, we can, uh, I think we can see what uh, she could do, uh, but obviously she's not gonna speak to specific no, cases. Okay. A very detailed report about abuses of the Rohingya mm -hmm. in Myanmar. I know that the, 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 the mandate of that, the, good offices expired, but I'm wondering what is the Secretary General's thought, I asked the, the, the UK ambassador, he said there are different ways are being considered of how to, for the UN to mm -hmm. deal with this problem. Is there any proposal by the Secretary General either to revive that office or a different office or have no, some increased focus on I don't think there will be a it? revision of, of that office, but that is not to say that there will be, uh, there continues to be keen uh, interest in the situation in Myanmar. Uh, obviously on the human rights issue, but also what the UN can assist and can do um, on the development issue through uh, the coordinated work of uh, the UN development agencies in Myanmar, and obviously on the political front uh, in which DPA will be in the lead, but it will be a coordinated outlook on, on behalf of the UN system. Right, but when you say the political, do you mean in terms of, does, does the Secretary General believe, for example, that the Rohingya should be are, are, are and should be acknowledged as citizens of Myanmar. Look, I, I think we have, uh, this is a, an, an ongoing uh, discussion. I think the, the Secretary General of the UN has been very clear on the need to address uh, the needs of the Rohingyas in a way that respects uh, their rights and that is good for the country as a whole. The senior level vacancies, I did notice that the DPI position is up and I just wanted to confirm this means essentially that it's not like somebody that holds the position can reapply. This means that it's over. It just means the position is, is open. Anyone can, uh, can apply to the position. And I guess my, I saw the qualifications under it and I just, this is just an aside and I'll, I promise I'll get back to a question, but it seems like maybe due process and sort of like uh, in terms of, uh, it seems, is, is this job description of the qualifications of the person applying for that any different than it was two years ago? I think job descriptions uh, shift. I would have to look at. I, I I don't have at the top of my head the job description that was that was uh, that's okay. been used in the past. More so, I, I just wanted to know it's because you you mentioned USG. So for example, you know DPKO. There's a lot of discussion about it. Can you just say is this ever going to show up as a vacancy? And if not, no, why not? I can, given I, can, the, I can only speak to what's uh, online and and what's there. I think others will come as they come. Okay, and the, can, if you don't, I yeah, just, uh, yesterday the meeting with uh, the Saudi foreign minister, mm -hmm. I, I saw that you were there, so I wanted to ask you something about it. I noticed, first, there's no readout. Mm -hmm. Is that a new policy of, of, of No, or? it's, you know, sometimes we've had readouts, sometimes we don't. Uh, they had a, I, what was a very broad ranging discussion on, on regional issues, and it should come in as no surprise on, on Yemen, on Syria, on Israeli, on Israel and Palestine, uh, on, on the uh, on the region, it was the first time they had met um, as uh, that Mr. Gutierrez had met the foreign minister as foreign minister. So it was a good it was a good discussion. And can I ask specifically whether the issue of the children in armed conflict annex? I, I didn't see Mr. Rugi up, uh, up there. Did she come in after the, the the photo op, or if she wasn't there, why wasn't she there? And did this issue get raised? As I said, the, it was a broad-ranging uh, issue, uh, and obviously included included Yemen. Um, and there were no no one sneaked into the meeting after the photo op. Okay.